So here, here's, a, here's a, a, a figure of this. Here's the per gene. Here's its promoter. There's a ribosome. And this gene is now active, illustrated by this globe. And, and the gene is producing messenger RNA, which is being turned into protein, into period protein, by the protein synthesis machinery. Some of those protein molecules are unstable, and they are degraded by the cellular machinery, the pink ones. And, and some of them are, are stable for reasons which we will come to tomorrow. And, and the stable proteins accumulate. And this protein buildup continues. The gene is active, RNA is made, protein is produced. And at some point uh, in the middle of the night, there's enough protein which has been produced. And that protein migrates into the nucleus. And, and the protein then acts as a repressor to turn off its own gene expression. And in the morning, when the sun comes up, uh, these protein molecules start to turn over, they degrade and disappear over the course of several hours, leading to, um, leading to the, the turn-on of the gene, uh, which begins the next cycle, the next production of RNA. Now, this animation is similar to the one I showed you yesterday, except now we have the positive transcription factors, psych and clock, which actually bind to the per promoter uh, at this e-box, and, and drive transcription, turning on RNA synthesis. And here is the production of the per protein by the ribosome, the unstable pink proteins, which are rapidly degraded. And then uh, every other protein or so molecule is stabilized and, and accumulates in the cytoplasm during the evening. And <clears throat> when sufficient protein has accumulated, then uh, then the protein uh, migrates into the nucleus, near the, into the nucleus, near the end of the night. And uh, per protein interacts uh, with the clock and cycle protein, probably directly. And that interaction extinguishes transcription. Uh, and then in the morning, the per protein is degraded. It disappears slowly over the course of the morning until all of the protein is gone. And as the last protein molecule disappears, the clock and cycle transcription factors are activated and, and transcription and the cycle uh, begins anew. So here we have the period gene and the timeless gene. And um, they are both driven, transcription is driven by clock and cycle, which binds to both promoters. So these proteins accumulate and um, the RNA accumulates is synthesized and you'll notice that the pink protein disappears, but when the pink protein interacts with the timeless protein, then uh, a hetero stable heterodimer is formed. So the distinction between the pink per protein, which gets degraded, and the red per protein, which is stabilized, is an interaction with timeless. And so the heterodimers now move into the nucleus. So the form of per that moves into the nucleus is a heterodimer. And it's the heterodimers which interact with clock and cycle and extinguish transcription. Now, when the sun comes up, notice that that sunlight quickly causes the degradation of the timeless protein. And then after timeless is degraded, the period protein slowly disappears. And that disappearance uh, is then followed by the turn on of transcription of both genes, which is then followed by the production of RNA and uh, the beginning of the next cycle. And so I have, I think, next a an animation which now illustrates the contribution of both double time and cryptochrome uh, to this cycle, which we're building in a more and more complex fashion. So here's the double time kinase, which puts phosphates on the period protein, and here's the cryptochrome the light harvesting protein. And so now the cycle starts out as it did before, but we see that the double time kinase, this casein kinase 1 epsilon, is actually the agent which contributes to the degradation which, uh, of the period protein, which kills the pink proteins, if you will. And if the period protein which is produced gets together with its partner timeless and forms a heterodimer, then the heterodimer is resistant to the effects of the double time kinase. So that's really the distinction between the protein which is degraded and the protein which is accumulated. Then the heterodimers uh, get together and connect. And, and here is the conversion of cryptochrome from an inactive to an active form. And it goes and kills timeless. 
And then the double time kinase goes and kills the per proteins, turns over the proteins, and transcription becomes anew. So, so this, is, this has added two elements to the, to the story. Uh, first, the double time kinase is actually the agent which turns over the period protein or assigns the protein as being a substrate for degradation uh, in the manner that I referred to previously. And, and second, cryptochrome is actually the light harvesting protein. And cryptochrome, when it's converted from, a, an, active, uh, from an inactive to an active form by light, uh, cryptochrome actually then leads to that very rapid degradation of the timeless component, which then uh, begins the day anew, leads to the turning over of the period protein, and, and starts, the cycle, starts the cycle once again. This now gives you a flavor for um, the, how the double time mutant protein, this mutant kinase, which doesn't work very well, compares with its wild type counterpart and the effect of that mutant on the cycle. So here's the uh, double time kinase uh, destroying the period protein. And notice that it's having trouble functioning. It takes a couple of shots uh, to kill the pink protein as, as compared to the normal one shot, which the wild type protein is able to affect. Yet the accumulation in the cytoplasm in flies accumulates, uh, occurs pretty normally. And so these heterodimers uh, accumulate in fairly normal fashion. They migrate into the nucleus. They make contact with the uh, positive transcription factors, extinguish transcription. And now here's the conversion of cryptochrome to the active form. And now watch what happens. Timeless disappears very quickly. And now the nuclear form of the kinase starts to degrade per. And the mutant form has trouble keeping up. It's working more slowly. This takes longer to go away. And as a consequence, the, the turning on of transcription the next day occurs more slowly uh, in the mutant strain, the strain with the mutant double time kinase, as, um, as compared to the wild type strain. So that, that's actually a, a fairly realistic depiction of, of how that mutant actually, uh, actually length, lengthens the protein.